Okay, the year of the Lord was 1945. We were just past the war and HPI uh, announced the HPI Venture, uh, a crawling vehicle that would mean a really total uh, difference in the industry and uh, it would drop people's jaws. And they announced it on all their social media platforms and on newspapers and stuff, and it just didn't come. Well, you know what? It finally did come. All bullshit aside, took them, uh, uh, I think, two, three years to uh, release this vehicle, I think. I think it first emerged in uh, 2015, like early 2015. Uh, everybody was like all giddy. This is before, I think it was even before the Ascender. I could be wrong with that, but it was way before the, the Axial SCX-102. And it was, of course, decades before the, the Traxxas TRX-4. HPI announced this thing. Now, is it uh, too late to the party? Because, I mean, that's of course the elephant in the room, or uh, are they still on point with this release? Um, well, let's find out in this video. So far, I'm pretty enthusiastic, actually. This is the third time that I'm fucking recording this video because I had my microphone turned off, so I'm just really dumb for doing that. Uh, the box art looks really good. You will see all these close-ups of the box. You know that I'm not uh, that much of a cardboard fetishist. Uh, it's ready to run, 4 wheel drive, 2.4 GHz, pre-painted, it's electric, it's HPR Racing, it's Venture, it's a Toyota FJ Cruiser, and it is a Hearing Aid 10 or a Pensioner's 10, whatever people call it. I think that's a hilarious way to describe the color, I think they actually call it sand. But when I just posted a picture on my Facebook saying like, damn, that's a great color, people are like, yeah, that's the same color as a Hearing Aid. And yeah, kind of, kind of is really. Um, yeah, it says on the box what more it does. Three is lipo capable, blah blah, aluminum threaded shocks, did that, you name it. Anyway, boring. Um, comes. Oh, hold on. One thing I do need to show you because I think that that's just maybe in my. Uh, this is like a pre-release version. So in my version, I think that's just something that they messed up a tiny bit. Uh, completely completely ready to run with a plasma nickel metal hydrate battery. The kind of people at HPI must know that I really don't get a boner over uh, nickel metal hydrate batteries and always throw them away because they supply you with uh, this charger um, which will uh, trickle charge your battery in uh, 19 hours gives you 10 minutes of runtime on a nickel metal hydrate. I mean, if you if you are really new to the hobby and you just want to go out and have fun, don't expect this thing to charge it uh, anytime soon, but you will get a charge eventually. But in my case, I'm just gonna throw this away. They already uh, did me that favor by not including the battery, so that's pretty cool of them. You get a uh, bag with the plat. Let me just put this thing here. You get a bag with the plastic knickknacks. Uh, some basic tools, I think these are some uh, bumper mounts, some uh, uh, additional uh, drive shafts uh, and there's also uh, Tony Phelan from Competition X pointed this out, there's this tiny insert if you don't like this uh, brush guard, if you go like, uh, oh my god, you know, it makes the car look geeky or whatnot because it looks like it's wearing glasses you take this thing out, you install two plastic inserts that you find in this bag and it looks totally badass in one go um, but anyway, cool that that's included Comes with a manual, as per HPI, very clear, uh, super clear drawings, uh, parts numbers, in case you do mess something up. Uh, you go on this thing and you scan some, some, uh, some code here, some QR code, takes you to the HPI website, you order your spare parts over there. Uh, you can put these stickers on, makes the truck uh, perform a whole lot better, or at least it makes it a tiny bit more visible because this hearing aid color, you won't be able to spot it when you're out in the forest or whatnot. Uh, so yeah, uh, all of that pretty complete. It comes with this uh, TR4, TR, TF, TF40 radio. I've seen these radios in the past. I've never seen one up close. This is not the type of radio uh, when you see it uh, out on a trail or out on the track that you go like, oh my God, can I look at that? But for a ready to run radio, uh, well, I think it does what it needs to do. Has a pretty good feel to it. Uh, well, again, you know, I got like big hands, but uh, Pretty okay, drop down wheel, it's foam, it's chrome, uh, nothing to complain about, collapsible antenna, takes four AA batteries, uh, throttle trim, steering trim, uh, I think even jewel rate, on off switch, it's all there. And I think when it comes to the design it actually looks pretty good. So nothing to complain about with this radio, I will however change it out in the long run. Uh, that's always the thing with crawlers, people look at them and they go like, you know, you can complain about a ton of stuff like for example wheels, tires, body, all of that stuff. But 
at the end of the day, who of us uh, actually drives with uh, stock wheels and tires, stock servo, stock ESC motor, stock body? I think absolutely no one. So what we're really looking for is a decent set of uh, axles and frame rails. But everything else that's included is basically a bonus. If you look at uh, the car, it's pretty uh, short in footprint or in footprint uh, like wheelbase wise. It's, uh, it's what, you're, what you're used to with your uh, axial SE Extend 2. Uh, your longer wheelbase for Terra Center because the Bronco was really short and also uh, pretty comparable to uh, Traxxas TRX4. I will make sure to uh, perhaps make a video in which I put all those trucks uh, side to side so you can see uh, the similarities but also the differences. Now uh, approach angles pretty good so this is a uh, quite far tucked in these bumpers uh, and let me also start out with uh, showing you these bumpers well like I said you can take this brush guard off modify this a tiny bit you can even put a winch on there there's more than enough room uh, there's d-links they're plastic but I mean they'll look cool and uh, they do function you can of course uh, adjust uh, how far this comes out or tucks in by uh, taking out a few screws and just mounting it where you uh, want to mount it. The rear bumper has like a bit of a double function. So uh, this also is your uh, spare tire carrier. Comes with uh, sort of like, um, yeah, what do you call this, like a clip. So this actually slides in the body, holds it down and keeps that uh, spare wheel from uh, flopping around when you have all the body clips in. So there's a tiny body clip that goes into here uh, through that uh, rear bumper. And then of course you have your four body clips uh, on top of the uh, that shell. Let's uh, take the shell off. I already took the body clips out. Um, well, you have this really nice molded roof rack. I think it looks pretty detailed. It also looks uh, pretty realistic. Uh, I've seen one of these vehicles up close because uh, somebody I know has one and I paid a bit of attention. And this is actually what that uh, roof rack looks like. So that's pretty cool that that's already included. The mirrors are actually this square. So it's like you're driving with two boxes of cornflakes uh, plastic to the side of your car with uh, indicators. So they capture that pretty nicely as well. Now at first glance you would think that these uh, wheel arches that are like bolted on in rubber or whatever just like you would find them on uh, for example a TRX4 that's not the case all of this is a uh, paint trickery so they actually pu put some uh, some black flat flat black what, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it on the outside of that uh, Lexan body makes it look really good in my book it doesn't need a whole uh, lot for it to look uh, well quite realistic out of the box I think they really did a great job with it uh, the front as well looks good but I'm pretty sure that uh, people like for example uh, James Knight at uh, Knight Customs that they will design a whole new grill piece with headlights light buckets indicators all that windshield wipers you name it so uh, those will be most likely items that you can expect at uh, Shapeways at some point same goes for the rear with uh, these tail lights pretty sure that some uh, tail light uh, buckets will be made for those as well so you can just install an LED and uh, insert a light kit and uh, go out in the dark as well um, well also of course with uh, uh, inner wheel wells inner fenders whatever you want to call them all that stuff will be uh, developed over time one tiny thing that i would have liked to have seen was uh, the masking of the, the headlights and the indicators and the tail lights on the inside before actually painting it i mean they did such a great job with uh, not painting over the windows like they did for example with uh, the traxxas trx4 pointing over there because it's standing over there where they did like a limo tint all the way around and just put black stickers on the outside making it look really ugly I think you will agree with me that when you put this body on the chassis that it immediately looks really good and uh, actually quite realistic so it's just a matter of putting an interior panel in there and uh, you have a trail truck that actually looks the part let's have a look at the chassis let's kill my lamps while I do that um, the chassis itself, well, you know, in a way it looks just like every other uh, uh, crawler chassis, but then in a way it, uh, it also it doesn't. It uh, starts of course with this, uh, well, call it like a ladder frame, so you got two uh, chassis rails that are steel, like a C-channel uh, chassis. It's a tiny bit wider in footprint than you would find it on, for example, uh, an axial uh, SE Extend 2. So the axial SE Extend 2, those bumper inserts, they're 70 millimeters, and I believe on this one they're actually 77. So you can use, for example, uh, axial bumpers and uh, stuff like that. And those uh, uh, bumper blanks or those uh, chassis blanks, like those uh, pieces that you put 
on the on the very uh, last part of the chassis but most likely you will need to use a spacer or something all in all not really a big deal well the bumper we've gone over that then uh, you have these axles they are really heavy by the way uh, so you have over here on the left which is an interesting part uh, you have the part where the, the pan heart connects and also where uh, the link connects that's all one bit and it also connects to the shock so this thing all actually has like a triple function and then uh, the one on the right doesn't mount the pan hard of course but just the shock and the link and all these parts in the back as well they're all cast aluminum uh, the diff covers as well they're cast aluminum so that's already a whole lot of weight down low so you do have plastic wheels and uh, well quite light tires but plastic uh, rims they look quite detailed if you add some more weight to these wheels by uh, using some uh, aluminum rims, for example, uh, you will have a truck that's really, really planted. Um, interesting fact, steering link, um, chassis mounted servo, steering link in the front and then the link actually going from left to right is uh, behind the axle, so super protected. Uh, I think that's a really cool uh, design feature, also means that there are is like uh, a tiny bit going on on top of those uh, steering hubs with uh, uh, an anodized aluminum plate which uh, seems to be stamped aluminum but uh, it looks really cool and again adds with uh, adds to the weight a tiny bit there's quite a bit of hardware going on over there as well I think it looks really really good and uh, well designed and properly engineered um, let's go to the shocks first plastic shock hoops that feel really sturdy uh, so at first glance you might think that they're a tiny bit flimsy just because they look really thin but they're actually they're quite stiff uh, you have aluminum body shocks and uh, they're threaded so you can uh, adjust the preload on them uh, dual rate suspension so like a tiny spring on the top and then a, a longer spring at the bottom the white I've seen a few people complain about that I don't know really why you would complain about it because I think it sort of like attracts the eye and adds to a tiny bit uh, of details and it gives you some more stuff to look at now the suspension tuning on it at first it may feel like a tiny bit stiff but I think that uh, over time once you get this thing out on the trails a tiny bit that it will uh, sort of soften up and uh, loosen up a tiny bit uh, has quite a bit of uh, travel going on as well I'm not uh, one of those guys who partakes in a flexing Friday but uh, in case you are, I think you will find that uh, this is pretty proper because it's like one wheel up before uh, the other one comes up. Uh, rock sliders are included. Um, the ones I found uh, on the SEX10 version 2, they were pretty flimsy because I could not get them to stay unwarped when I mounted them. Uh, these look pretty neutral and they also feel pretty stiff. So I have high hopes that these will actually uh, hold up to the task. My Viterra Ascender, for example, did not come with any uh, rock sliders. And then of course in the TRX4, it's a whole story, whole different story altogether because that thing comes with almost like a full uh, chassis plate, the full width of uh, the body. But this is like a nice middle road and uh, I like to see this included and also like the design of it really uh, well, well finished and uh, looks very neutral. You have uh, here in the front, a brush motor the servo is really not a servo that you want to keep it's a, a pretty weak servo uh, really a ready to run servo nothing that uh, you would expect any miracles from uh, the motor is a 35 turn brushed motor uh, really perfect for a ready to run uh, motor option uh, waterproof ESC uh, with on off switch takes up to 3S lipos the only thing that I really do not get and most likely that's also why HPI did not include that battery is this Tamiya plug that you find on the ESC this is really well from the era I guess from when they designed this these plugs were still in fashion but uh, currently I don't know anybody that still uses these really nice small transfer case uh, some really straight uh, driveline action going on so from uh, these gears over here these are all uh, Savage XS gears if I have that correct so all of the gears in here are uh, metal and they really stand up uh, to the abuse because usually they're used in a much faster truck uh, aluminum motor plate uh, leading up to this uh, uh, drive shaft over here that then goes into a really small footprint uh, transfer case uh, transferring all that power then to the front and uh, rear axle uh, this is pretty interesting you can adjust the slipper clutch with this nut over here so actually on this uh, drive shaft 
you will see that there's uh, that spring and then that uh, adjustment uh, nut for your slipper clutch. That's some pretty clever uh, engineering going on right there. One thing that I uh, do not like because I mean I need to nitpick a tiny bit as well is uh, they have aluminum going on over here in the front, aluminum or steel. Uh, and then here as well, like uh, behind uh, behind that pumpkin the, to, to connect those wheels together for the steering. But then all of this stuff, this is all plastic. So you will see this wishbone on the top. That's plastic. These lower links are all plastic. And I'm just not too, too enthusiastic about uh, using plastic in those areas. I'm pretty sure this is a really easy upgrade, but I would have liked uh, to have seen this be aluminum right out of the box just because that is a, a quite demanding area if you really get stuck with your truck and you're trying to sort of like huck it out you don't want all that power to go through this plastic links and sort of like spaghetti itself out uh, making you completely ineffective really nice uh, smooth skid plate you won't get hung up with this and then there is a, a quite a cool battery tray so there's a pin in the back over here then there is a clip and you can lift this up Put your battery in there, well, like I said, 3S capable. Clip this back down, snaps into place, put the body clip in, and you're good to go. This whole tower in the back is, of course, there to uh, make sure that you can mount that body. I don't think it looks super intrusive. They managed to keep this pretty much nice and slim, adjustable body mounts uh, front and back, so you can put your body of choice on there. So whether you're a Toyota guy, Chevy guy, Ford guy, or whatever, I'm pretty sure that you will find a body of your liking that you can uh, mount to the HPI Venture. All in all, I think that it uh, looks really promising. Now, um, is it so that uh, HPI Venture is like too late to the party, that we have like too many cool cars out currently, and that this does not have a position in the market anymore because it's no longer innovative or whatnot? I don't think so. They did something, I think, different uh, than the competition. There's a lot of weight really down low. The pumpkins are uh, relatively small. I mean, the, the truck looks really good, comes very complete. Uh, price point is okay. It sits uh, well below 400 bucks. So overall, I must say that I'm really impressed. If you want to find out more about the HPI Venture, go check out uh, the links in the description box. There will also be uh, some links to uh, HPI and Ventures uh, Facebook page that you can uh, check out. And if you want to be a tiny bit ahead of what I'm doing over here, also go check out uh, the links to my Instagram and Facebook. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Doesn't cost you any money, neither does uh, subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments box and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and goodbye. Back on.